Good to see you this morning. Let's see, I'm looking for, which one am I looking for? This one right here. <laughs> you mean the one right in front of me, that's good. I got Hillsong United lyrics right in front of me, in case I want to bust out in song today. Whose phone do I got? <laughs> good to see you this morning. Boy, we've had a weather change, haven't we? Woo! Summer seems like it hit us. And uh, wow. Well, listen, God is good. There's lots of good things happening at your church. And um, one of those things that, that I'll point out here uh, this morning is prayer and an emphasis on prayer. And, and boy, um, Don and Sarah Harvey and Avania, and there's, there's, there's something happening where there's more of an emphasis here, and, and it's a really good thing, um, where they're praying uh, about 9.30-ish, they're starting to pray uh, back here, actually, the mommy room transforms later into the mommy room, but it becomes a prayer room there. Uh, but what I envision in the future is that literally when we go to two services where people are praying through one service, where that is your ministry. And I know that there's people that feel a real burden and a calling to pray, and so I'm calling you out um, to say this is what, what uh, or an opportunity for you and what we want to see in the future. Uh, there's a spiritual battle every day. There's a spiritual battle for your life every day. And if you've been a believer, you get it. And as your pastor, I know that Saturday nights in particular, the enemy wants to throw me off. And uh, so there, there's just this battle that is going on in your life for every believer in Christ uh, there's, the enemy wants to distract you, wants, to get, off, wants to, to get you off of God's best, and um, that is the reality of this life. When, when the Lord returns, that will cease to exist. Isn't that awesome? We, can you imagine even like a life with no temptation? Hello? Seriously? I mean, I, I dream about this. I think about this. This is, this is awesome. When the Lord returns and we get to experience no temptation. I mean, how many were tempted yesterday? Come on, just be honest. In some way, you were tempted. You're all a bunch of liars. <laughs> <clears throat> Glad we're talking about sin this morning. Jeesh. <clears throat> no, we're all tempted. We're all tempted. And, and we're in this series called Prove It. Last week we talked about the eyewitnesses, that these were actual eyewitnesses, okay? It wasn't like this is some story passed down from generations. The people that wrote the Gospels were eyewitnesses to the truth, to the truth. It was something they saw, something they experienced, and it was something that we can take their experience as truth. We can believe it because it is true that he is alive, He's alive. We may not experience every blessing yet that God has for us, but we will. We win. If you, if you read the end of the book, we win. We win. And we have to have an eternal view in this world because some things get hard. The day-to-day -day life gets hard, does it not? Isn't it a struggle at times? More so than you even want to admit this morning. Isn't it true? There is a struggle that goes on, but we win, and if we will be faithful, if you will be faithful, if you will be faithful today, and faithful tomorrow, and faithful next week, and faithful next month, there will be a payoff that is greater than anything you could ever imagine. This is our God, and it's worth a clap offering. This is our God. This is who we pursue. This is who we love, and so we have a, a message in prophecy this morning to strengthen, encourage, and comfort the church. The Lord longs for you. He longs for me. We're as close to God as we choose to be. What an incredible message for us. We're as close to God as we choose to be this morning. And so I'm saying choose, choose the Lord today. Say, God, I choose to give you all of my heart. So we're looking at this this morning, we're looking at prove it. Last week was 
Okay, the eyewitnesses this week, it's more of turning to us. Prove it. Prove it by the way you live. Okay, prove it by the way you live. We kick it off this morning. The, the title this morning is Choose to Live in the Light. Choose to live in the light. What kind of trouble have you gotten in at night? You're like, oh, I can't say. Isn't it true? You know, when you look over your life, now some of you, you know, like Cindy Casper are like perfect, you know, they've never done anything wrong in their whole life. You know, I'm the one that's corrupted her, okay? So, so, so I mean, you know, the things that happen, if you look back at your life and you look at the things that have been hidden or concealed in your life and how many of those things happened at night where you were hiding something, hiding your sin. See, so, you know, kind of in, as a youth pastor, uh, especially, we'd always tell the students, nothing good happens after midnight. You know, it's like, don't, don't, there's, don't stay out after midnight unless we had an all-nighter or something, right? You know, and I hated those. But, but uh, and every youth leader says amen. I mean, they, they hate those events too. You know, about 4 a.m., you're like, somebody just shoot me, you know? But Nothing good happens after midnight because things happen. Ideas come up that probably aren't very good, and then the execution seems possible. Why is that? Because all accountability has been removed, and things are hidden in the dark. We get in more trouble at night. Because of that, the Caspers even have a rule. Our household rule is that there are no sleepovers. Now, that might be like piercing to some of you, because some of you are like, that's the only night that I get to sleep, is when they go to someone's house and they have a sleepover. I mean, I, I, but then whoever had the sleepover, there's no sleep. Anyhow, you get it. You get it. But there's things that happen at night. So the big idea this morning is this, living for Christ means intentionally living in the light. Intentionally living in the light. Intentionally having accountability in our life. Intentionally bringing people into our life that will help us living in the light. How important is that on this journey? Maybe it's not a part of your life today, but I encourage you, I hope that it will be as you intentionally live in the light. We'll talk a, a little bit about it this morning. We're in 1 John chapter 1, starting at verse 5. Here's where we start. This is the message we have heard from Jesus, and now declare to you. Now, who did they hear it from? They heard it from Jesus. They didn't hear it from somebody else, right? They heard it from the Lord. It's something to take note of, Right? They heard it from Jesus. This is the message we heard from Jesus, and now declare to you, God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but we go on living in spiritual darkness, we're not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. How much sin? All sin, right? If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. How much wickedness? All. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. No place in our hearts. Heavenly Father, help us today to understand your word. But Lord, not just to understand it, not just to know it, but God, to apply it. Help us to have the courage to move forward in you. God, to grow in you today. May we not look in the mirror of your word today and go away unchanged. May we allow the power of the Holy Spirit to transform our hearts, to transform our lives, that we would be the people of God that you have called us to be, full of faith, full of love, full of power, 
and passion and motivation to follow you. We thank you, God, for what you're going to accomplish today. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone who agrees said, amen, amen. This light versus dark thing, and it's interesting for us because we can understand it in the natural. We kind of understand it. We kind of get it. And if you've been on the planet very long, you certainly understand uh, what it means to be in the light where you can see everything. When we were just driving to a friend's house, I was taking one of Drew's friends home, and, and my, my comment was to myself, boy, I'd like to see this place in the light because I can't see anything. So we get it. We understand it, but here we are, and we're looking this morning at what decisions do we need to make as followers of Jesus Christ. If you've said yes to Jesus, okay, if you've said yes to following him, what decisions should we make? Now, listen, look, there's a lot of them this morning. We could, we could have the 25 things. We won't do that this morning because our time is limited, right? But we're going to look at a couple things here. What decisions do we need to make as followers of Jesus Christ? And the first one is this, to choose to live in the light. To choose to live. You know, we have a choice every day, do we not? We have choices every day. I told you a few weeks ago that, that the studies that have, they've done, adults make 35,000 decisions every day. That like blows your mind. You know, kids under 12, about 3,000. Okay, but 35,000 decisions. And, and I, think, I think as we get older, there's, it's like if they like did a scale, I think there's more as we get older because life seems to get more complicated as, we, as we're breathing air here. There's more responsibility, more to do, more kids, more, right? Lots of decisions that come our way. So we have this choice, am I going to live in the light today? Am I going to live for God today, or am I going to live for myself? I mean, am I going to live for my sinful nature? Am I going to live by whatever I see today to get distracted, or am I going to live by you, God? Am I going to really follow you today, surrender my life? We've been singing all about it this morning, that you and I would be one. It's one of the songs we sang. Actually comes out of Song of Solomon. That you will not relent song this morning until you have my whole heart. And I would even argue that he doesn't relent after that. <laughs> he wants all of you. God wants all of you. So we learn from this scripture that God is perfect and he's this light source for us. We can trust him with our life, can we not? We can trust God, the creator of the universe. Sometimes we, we live our own life and we make all these decisions and, and clearly it shows that we don't trust you, God. We wouldn't phrase it that way, but there are many decisions that we make in our life that, that we are like, God, I know that you've said X, but I'm the one breathing here, so I pick Y. We, we've done that, have we not? We do those things, but here we recognize that God is perfect, and he is this light source. He can be trusted. He's pure in every way. Everything he says is full of truth and life and purity. This is our God. And so 1 John 1, 5 says, this is the message we heard from Jesus, and now declare to you, God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. Isn't that comforting to some degree? Isn't it? I mean, in a world where we can't trust everybody, I mean, how many have locks on your doors? Oh, it's everybody. Oh, okay. How about your cars? You know, right? So I was, we were with a police officer this, this week, and, and uh, it was an HOA meeting. The police officer said, out of all the larcenies that happened in cars, only one was locked. The rest of them, all the doors were unlocked. So they, they were just going around picking, you know, checking out all those doors. Trusting people. It can be hard. Do I open my heart to so-and-so? Can I, you know, we live this life, we can live this life so guarded because of 
the trust issues we have. And we've all been hurt at some time. And so we, we read in here that God, we read here that God is light. And there's no darkness in him at all. He can be trusted with our whole heart, with our whole life. And he wants us. He wants us to give everything to him. And so we got to get to know God. We got to get to know him personally. And we're bent. We have this, this bent towards sin. And I hate it just like you do. I don't like it either. I don't like this sin nature. I want to punch Adam and even, even their face. Maybe. But, but uh, you, you, you get it, right? We, we, we've got the sin bent, the sin nature, these temptations, and why do we dream about the future when the Lord comes back? Because that will be gone. That will be gone. The temptations and things will be gone. The distractions will be gone. There won't be these obstacles that we feel sometimes. We're all prone to these things. We have this bent towards sin. John 3, and, and actually I have John 3.19 up here, but if you have your Bibles, boy, have you ever heard that here. You can look at your Bible. I'm going to start at verse 16 so we get a little bit more of the context here for verse 19. Because we can read verse 19 and forget that John 3.16 is right just a couple verses before it. How many of you all have read a verse in the Bible and, and then later on you recognize what it's connected to and you're like, Oh, right? I mean, it's happened, anyhow, lots. So here we go. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And this judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. Going on to verse 20. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it, for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so they can see that they are doing what God wants. Do you, do you understand the importance of living in the light, in God's light, saying God hears all of me and not hiding? We all understand hiding. Many of us do it every week. We hide something, we don't like to talk about it, but oftentimes there's something where you are like, boy, I hope no one sees me here. I hope no one sees what I looked at. I hope it's possible, isn't it? Sometimes we hide We've got this bent. Sometimes we just hide our thoughts. Isn't it true? Haven't you had thoughts at times that you're like, lingered maybe a little too long with? Played with a little bit in your mind, only later to go, oh man, that was not good. Am I being real this morning? It's something we all deal with because we are breathing the same air this morning and we live in a sinful world and it shows even more so why our trust and our dependence must be upon Jesus Christ, his sacrifice for us and his grace and mercy for us every day, every day and it is available to us every day but we must choose, listen church, we must choose to live in the light. Choose to live in the light. What other decisions that we want to make is to choose to get real about our sinfulness. We've hit on this just a little bit here this morning already. 
say it's time to get real. It's time to get what? It's time to get real. Do you ever see the problem but somebody else doesn't? Like you might even be best friends with them and you like totally see the problem but you know they don't want to know or don't want to talk about it and so you kind of skirt it a little bit. Just a little tiptoe here kind of thing. We've all done that at some point or another. Let's look at this uh, quick video. It's just, there's all this pressure, you know? And sometimes it feels like it's right up on me and I can just feel it, like literally feel it in my head and it's relentless and I don't know if it's gonna stop. I mean, that's the thing that scares me the most is that I don't know if it's ever gonna stop. Yeah. Well, you do have a nail in your head. It is not about the nail. Are you sure? Because, I mean, I'll bet if we got that out of there. Stop trying to fix it. No, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just pointing out that maybe the nail is causing. You always do this. You always try to fix things when what I really need is for you to just listen. Yeah, well, see, I don't think that is what you need. I think what you need is to get the nail See, out. you're not even listening now. Okay, fine. I will listen. Fine. It's just, sometimes it's like, there's this achy, I don't know what it is. And I'm not sleeping very well at all. And all my sweaters are snagged. I mean, all of them. Yeah, I, that sounds really hard. It is. Thank you. Ow! Oh, come on, Ow. if you would just- Don't! Try to see things my way. Do I have to keep on talking till I can go on? We can work it. Sometimes we can see the problem. And sometimes we, even we, don't want to hear what it is. There's some comfort in our mess. There's some comfort. Why sometimes you might even look back and go, I don't know why. There's comfort in it. But we need to get real, we need to get real about our sinfulness. And so we've got some possible responses that we have towards sin in our life. So anything against God, okay, anything against his word, missing the mark, that's what sin is, okay? And so we've got some possible responses to our sin. The first one is this, to deny our sin, to deny it. No problems here, I'm good. I'm good here, guys. I don't have a nail. You know, we, we've, we've all done something like that uh, in our life. You know, I don't have a problem with lying. I, I'm really not prideful. You know, we say these things, and we might even believe them, but then all of a sudden we bump into it occasionally. We skirt it, and we're like, oh, man. And think of hurting, hurting my back, and uh, I had this moment where Cindy had to put my sock on. Guys, I cried. I was like, that was like a big moment to me. It's like, I had to ask for help. Do you think I had any pride? When we bump up against something... And we recognize, whoa, that's more alive there than I thought. I don't have a problem with lying. I'm not, I'm not prideful. I don't manipulate anybody by the way I talk. I don't hate anyone. I don't have a filthy mouth. I don't lust. I'm, I'm just looking. This is just window shopping. 
All these things that we can deny that we have a problem. No problems here. We're good. And then we go on living in the darkness as if it doesn't matter. And it truly does matter. 1 John 1, 6, so we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing what? The truth. We're not practicing the truth. So choosing to walk in spiritual darkness is knowing the truth and acting like it does not exist. Do you get that? Walking in spiritual darkness is knowing the truth. You've heard the truth. You know the truth. In fact, you would even say you believe the truth. But you go on living like it doesn't matter or like it doesn't exist. So that's denial. That's one of our responses. Have you ever been, have you ever been there before? You've been in denial. Me too group hug or something. (laughs) We've all been there at one point or another. Another response uh, to sin is make excuses for it. Make excuses for our sin. Everybody's doing it. And then we start, we'll even throw cultural things in there. You know, I'm Italian or, you know what I mean? You know, you like throw this, you know, I'm Hispanic. I'm a red-blooded American. You know, I'm old, I'm young, I'm, I'm born this way. Whatever the excuses can be, I've always been this way. There's no changing, there's no changing me. We've been there. We've made excuses. And how many times when you've been pulled over by a police officer have they worked? Well, I didn't know That red meant stop. (laughs) In fact, I thought yellow meant hit the gas. I know we all live like that. Many of us do. Making excuses for our sin, that's another response. Denying, making excuses, or we can do this. We can own it, guys. We can own it, ladies. We can own it. We can get real about it. We can confess to God, I have a problem. In fact, Lord, I am the problem. I am the problem, which kind of clashes with our society today because we want to blame everyone and everything else rather than taking responsibility for the person in the mirror. So we own it. And Scripture says in 1 John 1, 9, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful. He's what? He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Proverbs 28, 13 says, whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Finds mercy. This is our God who loves us. So sin gets in the way of our relationship with Him. Sin has always been the problem. And here we have an opportunity to confess our sin to God and draw close to Him. A lot of times the distance that we feel in a worship environment is because of the sin that we have continued to ignore. It's put separation between us and God. Is this true? It creates separation. And so we've gone on living life, living in spiritual darkness, rather than practicing the truth. And then we expect all the blessings of God. God, gimme, 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 gimme. I'm amazing. And God's like, I've put my finger on that in your life over and over and over again, but you've never confessed that and moved forward. And so we feel God's presence for a little bit, 
but then we're like, what is it that I just keep hitting? How many want to move forward in your relationship with God? Don't we all? Isn't, isn't this the, the cry of our heart? God, I want to move forward, and I certainly don't want to stand in the way of that. God, I want to give you all of me. I want to say, God, you are the one I live for. Every resource, every blessing, God, has come from you. And I want to give everything to you. I want to give you my thought life. I want to give you my heart to serve. I want to give all those things to you, God. So what else today? So we choose to daily turn away from sin. We choose to daily turn away from sin. Unfortunately, right now, we've got to deal with this sinful nature. And we have to deal with it daily. There's not a day that goes by unless you've been sleeping the entire day. Someone gave you some sort of sleep drug and you slept the whole thing through. Every day that you're breathing, the enemy is trying to mess things up in your life. And it takes a full surrender to God. Say, God, I want my focus to be on you today. I want to follow you with everything today. So until we leave this planet, the Lord returns Okay, the trumpet sounds and, and we're raptured together. Looking forward to that. You're like, now it'd be good? Okay, the, the rapture to happen or Jesus touches down, the second coming happens and everything changes here because why? You've been faithful. Well done, good and faithful servant. We all long for that day with the Lord. And so until then, we make a daily choice to follow Jesus and turn away uh, from our sin. We can't act like it's not there. La, 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 kind of deal. It's something that we get to deal with, have to deal with every day. Ephesians 5, 10 through 11 says, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, what? Expose them. Well, that's not right over there. Can we do that? We should. Those of us that are parents in this room have a tremendous responsibility to help our kids recognize what's not right, to raise them up to fear God, and to make godly decisions and godly choices. And so we choose to live in the light by following Christ and living for him every day. We choose to do that. We get to know him through reading his word. And we get to know him through prayer, just communication uh, with him, taking God with us during the day. He's already there, but it's, it's different. Sometimes we like check the box, you know, read one chapter a day, boom, prayer today, boom, done that. And then we go and live our life rather than saying, God, you're with me this entire day. Guide my life decisions. Guide my thoughts today. And Lord, if I'm doing anything that is against your will or, or is sinful, God, prick my heart. Make me sensitive to you, God, that I will stop in that moment and say, Lord, I choose you. I choose to live in the light today. I choose to expose my life to you today. I will not live in darkness. I will not live. I will not live in the spiritual darkness, I'll live in the truth. I'll walk in your ways. So what are areas of your life need to be brought into the light today? That's kind of a scary question, isn't it? You're like, um, can we skip this question today? And we've, all, we've all felt that, right? You know, but what areas today... Is the Holy Spirit illuminating in your life things today that you need to bring into the light? Things that you've denied, things that you have made excuses for, that you haven't owned up to with God. And look, I, I can't answer that 
I can't answer that for you today. But I know that it's an opportunity for each of us today to evaluate that, to have a moment here and say, God, what are those things? What are the things that I've, I've continued to move on with and haven't surrendered to you? God, I need your help with those things. We, you, you have so many things that we can deceive ourselves in and, and uh, something totally crazy this week that I, that I saw on, uh, on a news story was something that, that um, when, is it, when it's exposed, you're like, are you serious? Are you serious? And it was this. 64% of people admit to peeing in the pool. They tested 31 pools and only one pool did not have pee in it. And there was an average of eight gallons of pee in each pool. Would you like me to stop now? Because I could go on. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? They're like the burning sensation that you get in your eyes and the aroma <laughs> is actually the urine mixing with the chlorine. Now, all of us in this place today are like, yuck! I'm never stepping foot in a pool again, but you'll be there. Memorial Day weekend, you'll be there. And you'll be like, Pastor Andy, never mention that. That story's not real. This burning in my eyes, nah. This is not real either. The Holy Spirit this morning is illuminating things in your life. Will you deal with it? Will you deal with it? Will you do business with God today? I can't do business for you. It's something that each one of us, we're, each one of us are going to stand before God and give an account. Thankfully, as believers in Jesus, when we go to judgment, it's going to be judgments of rewards because the blood of Christ has covered your sin. Is that awesome or what? But until then, we have these lives every day that we live, that we encounter sin, and God today is giving us an opportunity to step forward in Him. Step forward in your relationship with Jesus today. The band is gonna play today. We're gonna open up the altar. If you need to come down and, and get on your knees or whatever you wanna do, raise your hands, whatever you wanna do, okay? We're just opening it up today. Nobody's gonna say, go ahead and tell me your top three. We're gonna post them on Facebook later. So you really get healed. We're not doing that today. This is between you and the Lord, an opportunity for you to make things right with him today. Let's do it together, okay? Heavenly Father, thank you for what you're gonna do today. Lord, may we be open to you. May we step forward in you. May we choose to live in the light today. In Jesus' name.